What's going on everybody? Dato Doi here, and for today's video, I wanted to talk about something that gets brought up a lot whenever people discuss what they feel Dragon Ball Fighters needs to add or what it's missing. That of course being alternate costumes for the characters. I've been wanting to make this video ever since I scrolled through one of Bandai's tweets and found a tweet saying they were lazy for not including alternate costumes, and if they were ever to be made, they should be made available via in-game Zenny. And this tweet made me realize that there's a lot of people playing Dragon Ball Fighters right now that probably don't understand what goes into making these characters. But even I really don't understand all of their techniques, and I've been a huge fan of their work for a while now. One of the only fighting games that I was actively playing before Dragon Ball Fighters came out was Guilty Gear XR. This of course is another game made by Arc System Works, and it's the game that originated the style found in Dragon Ball Fighters. And if you want to see the process behind making a character look like this, you should definitely go give this video a watch. It's 58 minutes long, and goes over what tools they use, what mentalities they went into when designing these characters, and even some overall design philosophy. It's seriously a great watch for anybody that's interested in art, anime, or even if you've ever just wondered how they got Dragon Ball Fighters to look so good. In this video, however, we're going to be breaking down a few techniques that went into these characters and why it's so hard to make costumes for a game like this. So one of the biggest things about games like Guilty Gear Xard and Dragon Ball Fighters is that they take 3D models and make them look 2D. Obviously this is no easy task, so they go into every game with the mentality to kill everything 3D-ish. Already you're seeing a need for a very keen eye to make a very clean looking character, but then you have to take into account that their next mentality is that the artist needs to decide, not the math. This of course is talking about in-game systems that would generate shadows based on where the light source would be, and things like that. Most games would aim for that and settle, but Arc System Works really wants to sell this whole 3D and 2D aspect of their game, so what they do is they go in and see where the shadows would fall, and then handcraft it to make it look as good as possible. And again, this is a huge amount of work for the team, as every aspect of the character needs to look correct in order to sell the feel. And when I say every aspect, I do mean every aspect. I won't cover it in too much detail because honestly, I don't think I'm anywhere near qualified enough to talk about this, but because the game does base itself so heavily in that anime aesthetic, it does require a lot of over-the-top cinematics, which is what you get in all those really close-up cutscenes found in Guilty Gear Xard and Dragon Ball alike. In order to pull these off, the characters have to look extremely good up close, resulting in character models models with extremely high poly counts. And even then, the lines on their body would still look pretty blurry if done normally, but they use a very special technique which allows them to control the width and density of the line at will. So with just these points, you can already start to see why making a costume for this game is almost as hard as making an entirely new character from the ground up. Keep in mind that it's not as hard as you don't have to make and balance an entirely new character, but for animation purposes, it's almost the exact same amount of work. I like to think about it as watching somebody create a beautiful animation, like Ultra Instinct Goku walking towards Jiren and knocking away bullets, and then thinking about how much work it would be to do that same quality of animation, but put Goku in his yard rat costume. But just because it's hard work, doesn't mean it's not worth doing, especially if they can make a profit off of it. Which is why I do think this game will eventually have costumes, but they're going to have to be extremely fan favorite costumes, and if we're being reasonable, they're probably going to have to charge almost as much as a new character. Don't get me wrong, I would love to be able to buy them with in-game Zenny, but I just don't see that happening with the amount of work that has to go into these things. Personally, I would really love to see Goku in his Yard Rat costume, or even Trunks' look from Dragon Ball Super, and I would love to hear what costumes you think you would really like to see in Dragon Ball Fighters. It's kind of a shame that the best looking Dragon Ball game that we have is also the hardest one to create alternate costumes, but that's kind of the nature of the beast really when it comes to this quality of art. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little more about what goes into making these characters look so good, or even at the very least, hopefully you go check out that other video and really get a handle on the insane amount of work Work these guys are doing to create this game. If you like this video and channel, make sure to remember to leave a like and subscribe. I'm Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next video.